Hey there, friend, and welcome back. My name is Sarah Rusk, and I have Mike Watts with me today. Hello, Mike. How are you today? Hi, Sarah. I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, thank you very much. You had sent me an email a little while back, and it's really funny how, like, synchronistically, this all kind of worked out because my friend Lee had run into you during one of the walking meditations, and now here we are. <laughs> yeah, I actually, my, so when I signed up to go to Joe Dispenza event, um, first, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Thanks for doing the videos that you put out because that's the whole reason we're here in the first place. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, my buddy, when I was getting ready to go, he started like researching all of this stuff and what to do. And he found your video about how to prepare for the Joe Spenza event. So I watched <laughs> that and then I watched like a bunch of your other videos. And then Lee ran into me at the Niagara Falls event. Oh, wow. And then I, you know, was still on your videos. And then Lee was there and then i was listening to the interview you had with her and then she was like i ran into this guy and then mike what and i texted her because we exchanged phone numbers nice and i was like yeah i'm kate northrop's husband you know the guy you're talking about in the video so it was all pretty funny and then i was like well if you want other people to share their story i'm happy to do that yeah oh my gosh i didn't realize that you actually had seen my videos um prior to that that's honestly really cool and i'm, I'm actually really honored so thank you for yeah for i mean watching it's that stuff. cool thing when you put your content in the world people watch it <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> well the thing with me and, and one of my biggest things that I've had to go through is I'm just this you know redheaded chick from New Jersey and I'm like who like you know cares what I have to say and it's been a whole buildup for me this entire year and it's crazy the impact that these videos have made with people meeting one another and the synchronicities that have played out from me putting this content out there it's just it's it's mind-blowing to my like limited thinking brain you know <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he has a big following, Joe Dispenza. So, yeah, which I didn't know it at the time. I mean, I have no clue. So, I know, <laughs> you know, we'll probably talk a little bit about that, but it's people when you hear about an event you're going to it in seven days, that's a long time. Yeah. And so, it's like, what do I do? Cause there's no information. It's not like his team sends out information. They do a good job logistically communicating to you, but not what, how to prepare. Cause everybody has a different experience that's there. So, yeah. you know, and it's cool. So, I would imagine. I didn't do this, but I watched your videos because my buddy sent them to me and then I started watching it, but I didn't know what to expect. So anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's cool that you've been, you know, you've consistently been putting out videos and sharing experience, et cetera. So, yeah, I mean, even everything in my life has just been like kind of spanning off of the stuff that I've learned this year from the retreats and everything. And I've, you know, as I've kind of mentioned this past week, I've had issues with my dog and just the community, the Joe Dispenza community is just insane how they rile, just rally up and they're like, Hey, we're here for you. And they're strangers from all over the world. Just send, taking the time to just sit and like, you know, put their hands over their hearts and meditate for maybe like, you know, half hour, like taking that amount of time out of their day. Like that's insane. It's, it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. Congrats. That's awesome. Thank you. So yeah, Mike, I'd like to know more about you. So please just give me, you know, a little brief rundown about you and who you are. My name is Mike Watts. I live in Miami, Florida with my two daughters <laughs> who are seven and four and a half, Penelope and Ruby and my wife, Kate. And yeah, we just moved here all coming up on two years and it's been exciting. Before that, we were living in Maine for 10 <gasps> years. Before Ooh. that, I traveled the country with my wife for 41 states 34,000 miles in a car in a Toyota Prius for over 10 months uh that, that was our first date I've lived all over the United States and we have a business together where we help women entrepreneurs have a better relationship with time and money I also do business consulting for small business owners or people in general who are burnt out but mainly like smoke focus in the small business world um yeah. And I've been on a constant search to find myself. Like, mm -hmm. how can we say, uh, once I quit drinking and drugs and all that stuff over a decade ago, I was like, there's gotta be a way where I don't need a substance to feel a certain way or to really find out who Mike is. And that's really been my last decade journey. And I went through a crazy illness that I'm still, um, recovering from over the last mm -hmm. five years, or I would say I'm healed now, as I told my wife, but visually not so much to put it that way but in my mind i'm you know working on that process of belief like what joe talked about his event that's been off and on so we've had a wild ride through that journey of illness and sickness and 
I like hip hop. I like to mountain bike, but I've hey. currently retired from that because I didn't do it professionally, just, you know, recreationally because yeah, I yeah. kept getting injured. <laughs> so <laughs> as much meditation as you do when you fall and hit a rock and break your ribs, like, you know, it really <laughs> takes time to heal. So yeah. <laughs> I sold my mountain bike recently. I just picked up a new one that's like uh, around town here in Miami that I can ride yesterday. So I love riding bikes. I love music. And I just like having a good time. I like good food. I like the movies. And yeah, that's, wow. I believe in self-empowerment and your own freedoms for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. I love about me. all of that. that. That's fantastic. That's, it sounds like you, like, you know what you're searching for. And I feel like most times that's one of the hardest things. It's like, for me personally, I knew something was wrong and I needed to make a change and I couldn't figure out what it was deep down inside that I needed to shift. And it's pretty awesome that you have that self-awareness and you you know that you have something that you're just, you know, looking to change pretty much. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like we all are though. I'm still working on my camera layout in my office with my lights. So, you know, that's a thing I'm searching for, but <laughs> it's, I mean, I can speak for myself, but I also going to, I've been to a lot of events in my life and mm -hmm. a lot of like personal growth workshops, et cetera. And it's like, we're all searching for something, Yeah. you know, and if we find it for, but for me, I would say what I was really looking for was myself, mm. you know, out of all this stuff I was going to and needing watching this video or this podcast and being, you know, it's like taking in all this information really is just creating a better relationship with who I was. Yeah. And as a society that is looked down upon a lot of times, right. Especially depending on what race you're born into this life with or what gender or who you decide to love, you know, it's like, there's always a negativity that's associated or oppression that exists based off of yeah. whoever you are. Like we've all, every society in the entire history of the world has been oppressed in some form. Yeah. And so it's like, we are built. Everyone is, everything is telling us that we're not enough and we're not there. But I think the belief for me was to really trust myself that I am here and I am enough and like discovering who I was. That's really the search I was on. I mean, my first website I ever created was who is Mike Ah. And it's not around. I think I still redirect the domain name to my website now, but gotcha. Yeah, it was interesting. That was the first. And I chose it because somebody else had that domain name and I was <laughs> learning about internet marketing, et cetera, in that yeah. time. And that was like what I chose. But I find it very fascinating now that it's yeah. Wow. MikeWatts.com was my first zone domain name. My goodness. I love that. I And it's so funny because every single time when we're looking for ourselves, we are always right in front of us. Yeah. Like no matter what, no matter what you're searching for, it's literally always right there. And they always say like, where's the hardest spot to hide something? And it's always like right, right in right front right of there. you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I would love to know about your experience with Joe Dispenza. How long have you known about Dr. Joe and what... Um, turned you on to his work. Yeah. So shout out to my buddy, Mo, who I mentioned earlier, because he, you know, pointed me in the direction of you. Uh, I know very little about Joe Dispenza before I went to the event. Uh, I, my wife wrote a book, my wife and my mother-in-law wrote books for Hay House. And so he has books published with Hay House. And so I met Joe probably five or six years ago in the green room oh, wow. um, of a Hay House event because that we were all, my wife was speaking on stage with him. And, but like, I didn't know who he was. I met Wayne <laughs> Dyer and Louise Hay and all these people, right? Like wow. in the back of the green room, which was mm -hmm. amazing. And now at that moment, I was like, who are all these people? I don't know. <laughs> and so I just learned about who they were over the time and got to like hang out with, not know so much with Wayne, but Louise a little bit here and there before yeah. she passed away. And just everybody else that's published by Hay House, because they used to do these big events all over the United States, all over the world. And we were in the back room. So I was like, oh, that's cool. He wrote a couple of these books, but that was it. And I bought like one or two of his meditations once, but I was like, these are super weird. Like, <laughs> I've never heard anything like, whoa, 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 <laughs> wow. You know, and all the noises he makes. And I'm like, this is Wizard of Oz, dude. Like, 
what is happening here. So that was my real experience with Joe. And I was listening to a friend's podcast. Her name is Kathy Heller. And I was listening to her podcast and she just talked about it. She's like, I went to this Joe Dispenza event. It was awesome in one of this courses she was teaching or something. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And I happened to be, I turned 40 this year. This is 2000, 2000 or 2022, 2000, 2022, is that how you say <laughs> something like that. <laughs> and I turned 40 on September 4th. And I just happened to be, I was happened to be laying on the bathroom floor, you know, and I was like, all right, well, let's just look it up. And I just looked at the dates and he had Niagara Falls, which it started on the 5th of September and went to the 11th of September. And I was like, okay, this is a cool 40th birthday present. I texted my wife and said, I'm going to go to Joe Dispenza for, for my 40th birthday. That's what I want to do. And she goes, great. And I just, it's, I put it in the calendar when the card opens. I went to the event and people were like, how did you get in here? You know, <laughs> people, this is the secret sauce, ready? Here you go. <laughs> he announces when you can get, sign up. You just put a m thing in your calendar five minutes before you log into your account, yep. the card opens and you go by when the email comes out and you just sign up, right? That's all yep. I did, secret, yep. right? <laughs> you just have to follow the instructions they give you. And I just signed up for Niagara Falls and that's when I went. And so, and then I learned all about Joe at the Joe event. I love that. I absolutely love that. I love that you got to to interact with Wayne Dyer and Louise Hay. That's, oh my gosh, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. So what takeaways did you get from your experience at the retreat? If I was to sum it up in one sentence, it was, I found my heart. Okay. And this is probably like the first time I've said it out loud without crying. So to somebody else. Yeah, it was, wow. I discovered the, my heart at the event. I felt it beating through my chest. I, now I can still periodically, it'll beat like literally through, can you see, I don't know, I, I, I hid myself so I can't see myself. <laughs> but like, so my rib cage is right here and I, all of it, every once in a while, I will feel this thing going dunk, 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 like through yeah. my chest and I, I can feel it. And it just like, is amazing. So if I was to sum it up in that, it is that, and I can expand more on that if you would like, but um, yeah. yeah, that was my one sentence takeaway from the Joe Dispense a week long retreat. That's, that's honestly really beautiful. Like I, I had something very similar this year. Like I've gone, I was supposed to do four events this year. I was supposed to be in Nashville next week, but with all this stuff with my dog, it, I, I can't go. Um, yeah. But I had a hard time finding my heart as well. I remember doing the heart opening meditations and sitting there and like clenching every like cell in my body, all my muscles being like, can you please feel like, why are you so angry all the time? Like, I'm so, I'm so over this anger. And then it wasn't until I had gotten home and had different experiences where I had to open my heart and not shut down and go back to that same place that I was able to experience like a full, like heart opening experience. And it, for me personally, it wasn't this big moment where I had to release all of these emotions. It felt like calmness and peace, which I thought was just beautiful. But I was expecting some big bombastic thing with fireworks being like, hey, we're open. Yay. But like for me, that that wasn't the case. But I would love to know more. Like, please, please tell me more. <laughs> yeah. So I have. OK, so I've done like a bunch of psychedelic drugs and I've done nice. a lot of weed and I've done alcohol and the whole bang right mm -hmm. and it's every time I would do something like that I would experience this outer body experience and I was like this is amazing right and so sorry my camera's falling off my computer I just noticed <laughs> so no it's like I would do this thing and I was like okay but it's like I don't feel it and then I had a kid and so she's seven now and I watch her as baby and she would just do all of these things because she liked it and she had fun and she was laughing and I realized especially as a man in the society that we're currently living in, especially the last couple of years like toxic masculinity has taken over and being a man is bad and yeah. all of this this narrative that has been put into the world right and so then I'm also in a business that is all geared towards women you know who people who identify as female and so then I've learned a lot of like why I got divorced and I've heard a lot of these stories about men. So there's an element and I grew up in a household that was pretty controlling. Mm -hmm. So it's like the heart and I played sports, right? Yeah. So in the sports world, it is yelling at you, 
So for me, I was like this, I'm very closed off. And I realized that, right? And at the event, I I, li- I went there with no expectation. People were like, why are you here? What's your intention? I was like, I don't have one. I'm just here nice. to see what happens. Yeah. Right. And so that's what I've actually been going to a lot of things now for instead of coming in with some sort of intention, because that sets it up with, I believe intentions are good, but it also sets it up for a failure Yeah. where if I don't meet that, then I failed. Right. Yeah. So which failures also to me could be good. Right. Yeah. So for me, I just went in and I kept, I've listened to all the lectures that he gave. Mm-hmm. I did all the meditations he gave. I didn't know, like, I think the longest I meditated before the event was 15, 20 minutes, maybe, Okay. right, ever, and very inconsistently over mm-hmm. time, and then the first meditation we did was two hours, and I was like, oh, this is what we're doing, okay, <laughs> right, and the shortest was probably 50 minutes, maybe, and the yeah, longest yeah. was four hours and 45 minutes, so... Yeah. I just was like, okay, let's go on this ride. And he kept talking about like stepping into the quantum and going through these levels of energy, beta and theta and Mm -hmm. alpha and all these different layers, right? And then I was like, okay. So I was just in the event and I just would feel during different meditations, this intense energy, like from my chest, from my shoulders down to three, right? Energy center three was this giant square. And I just felt this beam of light. If you think about at night in Las Vegas, you've ever been there, there's the Luxor that sends that giant beam up to the sky from the pyramid. Same thing. Like that's what it was like, you know, this incredible sensation of light. And I went on a ride like that whole weekend. I was on a ride. I felt so happy that I was there and I just felt love for everyone. And Mm -hmm. I had so much empathy for people Cause I'm sitting there, I've been on my own journey with my illness and my skin and et cetera, but I'm sitting next to a woman that looks pretty normal to me. She's like, I got stage four ovarian cancer. And then I got stage four breast cancer. And I was like, what is happening? Right? <laughs> like, I'm sitting. And then I, I think I talked to three or four people that were all like stage four cancer. Mm. And I was like, wow. But you see them walking down the street. They look like normal human beings, yeah. right? Just normal person walking down the street. And so for me, that was like a big opening experience to just tap back in, check in with my heart, realize that I am still alive, mm-hmm. right? That's, I would do this thing all the time where I would hear my kid's heartbeat and then I would check in with mine. I'm like, I don't feel anything. Like, <laughs> and so I would always visualize my heart being right here on the, the front of my chest. Mm-hmm. But in the meditations, I started visualizing kind of like that 3D diagram that's pretty standard that you see everywhere of like a heart shape kind of would fit my hand right here. Yeah. For those watching the video, it's like, And like in the middle of my chest, Mm -hmm. not on the, my rib cage, not in my back, but in the middle, like beating and pumping. And I would just check into that. And then I would check in, you know, as he leads you through the meditations from energy center one at the bottom of the perineum, all the way up to the pineal gland. It's so when I get, if I get nervous or anxious or stressed, I'm just like clinching that shit. And number one, I don't know if we can cuss. You're totally, yeah, you're so good. Okay. Um, (laughs) Like clinching it. And then checking with my heart. And so that's what I've been doing since the event. And it's been about a month and a half now, right? Since we got out a little over a month. And it's just like, okay, get myself centered, get myself centered, get myself centered. So give me back in with my heart. And as I started to say, like when we had our first kid, I would watch her. And I didn't really have with our first kid, these movie scripts around the kids and like, it was amazing, yeah. but it's like my life did not end when this baby came in. And there's a whole story with her too. Probably don't have time for that, but I was like, oh, there's another human here. Okay, great. Like, let's keep moving. Right. Yeah. And, and it wasn't, it was amazing experience, but like, I would say I was closed down. Clo- mm. That heart was shut off. I just came back from an event in, it's called Sacred Sons. And we were in the woods in North Carolina with 400 Ooh. dudes. And it, for the first time ever in seven years since I had kids, I looked at, I came home on, now I'm going to cry. <laughs> I came Saturday night. We were there for Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. And Saturday night, I came home from the event at, you know, this was like midnight and I'm going back to, we slept outside and I'm going back to my lean to and I'm there. And I like, look at the picture of my kids and my wife and I start crying, <sighs> you know, and then I went and did a meditation the next morning and started visualizing them and I'm like oh I'm there like I'm in the heart so for me it is everything because I'm so I'm an I'm trained engineer that's what I went to college for I have my MBA 
everything I look at is systems, how things work, how things structured, how do I make it more efficient? It's all brain. Yeah. It's all in my head. Yeah. It's all there. And so for now, what I've been working on in the last month and a half is like, how do I create from the heart? Cause that's the creation. That's where we come from. That's what the love, that's the art. That's the beauty of the world. That's the, you know, if I, if we'd say the head's the masculine energy and the, I know there's two sides of the whole thing, right? Yeah. The left and right. But like the head's the masculine and the heart's the feminine. Like that is where it's me tapping back into that. So that is what I mean by heart connection. My gosh. I, I have to say for me personally, I had a really rough upbringing with my dad. He chose alcohol over his family and he had no idea how to communicate what he was feeling, what he was doing. He used to, when he, when he passed, we found bottles upon bottles of B12 and needles mm. and he used to inject himself to keep himself alive. This man hated the dentist. He actually took pliers and pulled his own teeth out. Holy like, God. yeah, we finally got him to go to a doctor about a year or two before he passed. And when he got back, he had a whole list of things that he had to do. And he blamed my mom for every single one of his ailments. And he just couldn't, he couldn't get past himself constantly in high beta and couldn't find like that that self-love i guess or confidence because he didn't take care of himself um but for uh, from the point of, point of view of a daughter from the perspective of a daughter looking at you and hearing your story of everything that you're doing for yourself and how it's going to ripple out and affect your kids like i can't tell you how much like i fucking admire that because it's it's like it's a life that for me personally, I wish that I would have had the opportunity for. And it like, it's my heart is just like, it's just swelling. And I've got like goosebumps from just hearing what it is that you're, you're sharing. So from, from a daughter to a dad, thank you so much for what you're doing for yourself and the gift that you're going to be giving to not only you, your kids, your family, but also the entire world. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. And I'm sorry that you did not have an experience like that growing up, but you know, it makes us who we are at this moment in time. <laughs> I wouldn't be here telling my yeah. story and pushing True. as hard as I am now if it wasn't for that. And I, he was one of my, my greatest adversaries, I guess the word I can use mm -hmm. for that, yeah. because you know what, it got me where I am and here we yeah. are. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So did you happen to have any mystical experiences while you were at the retreat? The whole thing. Okay. <laughs> I mean, um, I would say the biggest one, you know, and I just want to preface this by saying everyone had a different experience. Like there was 1500 people at our event. So yeah. everyone went in with a big thing. And if somebody didn't have some sort of what they call a mystical experience, like it's not, doesn't mean you failed, no. right? Like, cause there is a lot of conversation around that. Mm -hmm. Um, I would think watching two people hand in their crutches at the end of the event, who I saw walking on crutches the entire week. And we're just like, I'm done with these to Joe. They walked up to stage, handed them to him. I'm like, what is happening right now? Like I was like, <laughs> what is going on? Right. And so, yeah, I, I would say during the, but the heart, I think the really for me, multiple times with this giant light of beam coming in my chest was pretty remarkable for me. And I also mm -hmm. had this weird sensation. I got the cough, you know, I started coughing, lost my voice in the first two days, then I got stung by a bee and my left knee swelled up in the middle of it oh, no. everywhere. It was crazy. Then I, it was every time we brought out food outside, like bees were everywhere and they're like, wow. oh, the, they don't sting. And I was like, well, I just got stung <laughs> and my knee swelled up. And then it was like so much fluid. It was wild. Oh my gosh. And I don't have, I'm not allergic or anything like that, but mm -hmm. it was, and then, but during the four hour and 45 meditation, the at four o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. I went on some ride that I don't even know how to describe, honestly. Like I was completely out of my body. I saw myself in a coffin and wow. was just looking at myself like dead in the coffin and riding above it. And I felt myself like concrete pinned to the ground. And I was just there like looking, sorry, just playing with my ring. And it's like <laughs> looking at myself from above outer mm -hmm. body kind of experience situation. And then went on this ride and I got done with that. You know, we ended it and I, be, what happened during it is he had us like lay down and sit up and lay down and sit up like three times during that time. And yeah. every time we would sit back up, I was so annoyed because I was on this <laughs> ride that I, I can only say it's when I did psychedelics. It's like when I've experienced something like that before. Mm -hmm. And I just left that. I was like, what just happened? You know, and the guy that was working there sees me walk in. He's like, how you doing? I'm like, man, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> But I'm, I don't know what, what's happening, you know, and I walked out, I walked direct in my hotel room. I 
went pee and then just literally collapsed on the ground, started crying, stood back up, went pee again, and then collapsed on the ground again and started crying. Wow. And then I stood up and I was like, what is happening? Like it was, it wasn't overwhelming. You know, sometimes we like lose ourselves because it's so overwhelming. He mm-hmm. talks about that with people making all the noise and stuff at the event yeah. where it's not, they're coming instead of with, instead of staying in their body they're making a lot of noise that's outside of themselves which isn't yeah. necessary right and so it's like because sometimes we get resistant around what's actually coming up yeah. and so for me I was like okay is this overwhelming it was just like I was so full of emotion and really filled up that it kind of probably was too much you know when I think about it and yeah. then I came back and I got my lunch and I went and sat down and this woman was like how you doing there's a lot of energy happening with you right now I was like I don't know what's going on but I'm <laughs> So that went on for probably, if we started that thing at four o'clock in the morning, it was probably until 11 and, you know, till we went back yeah. or maybe 10, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, I'm saying, is like, we went back in the room and then I mm. felt somewhat back to normal in a way, but yeah. And it just like the whole time I was so happy and I was laughing. And so it, to me, the whole weekend was a place and then there was a withdrawal coming back, right? It was like, you come back to reality of home yeah. and kids and people ask me for things and business. And so, but I never forget the feeling of what I was on that week. And that yeah. was the thing that's helped me the most is like, okay, I know how I felt there. So what are the small things I can do each day? To, I'm not going to feel like that ever again, because it's, that was a week. That is a human experiment. I, that's how I calculate. It. It's like 1500 <laughs> people eating the same food, meditating at the same time, not sleeping over the course of seven days, yes. sleeping little. Right. And so it's a giant human experiment. And that's, he's literally testing us as an experiment sometimes. Right. But it's <laughs> that structure will never happen again. Even if I go to a different event, different location, different food, different people, different. Right. Yep. So, but there's the feeling that's there. I could duplicate again. The experience I won't be able to, but that feeling I can live like that every day if I work that direction. So for me, that was the, a long answer to your question about mystical experience. No, it's great because you actually checked off a couple of different boxes. Cause I was actually going to segue into coming back. How have you been able to kind of, especially with like your business and everything, like what have you been able to have as like a spillover into, you know, coming back with just everything that you've been doing, you know, um, how have you been able to use like those heart opening experiences to, to help you? Some meditation. So I have meditated every day, except for one since I came back. Okay. And the one I did not, uh, we, this past weekend when I was at the sacred sons event in North Carolina, we got back, I got back at mid- midnight. I was already exhausted. I just was yeah. like, I meditated all day today. Uh, we had a boxing match. I got punched in the face a few times. Oh, stuff like that. So I was like, that was my meditation for today. Yeah. And so coming back, it was, I've the one thing I realized being there meditating, this is the only moment in the day where no one is asking me for anything. Mm-hmm. Like, and I don't have to do anything for anyone else. So it's like, I can sit with, it's sitting with myself, right? Like journey we've been on that I talked about earlier. And so for me, it's like this moment is so important. So whether I do it in the morning for 50, like it's basically, I try to do it in the morning. If I mm-hmm. wake up at 4.30 in the morning, I'll bust out an hour. Cause I know my kids aren't going to wake up between 4.30, 5.30. They usually wake up yeah. between around six. Okay. And if I wake up at 5.30, I have 15 minutes. So yeah. it's like, just get in a 15 minute short one. Mm-hmm. And if I can do another one later in the day, great. If I can do one before I go to bed, great. But I haven't been just the commitment to do it once a day. Mm-hmm. That's for me has been helpful yeah. and to, to take the time. And sometimes they've been great. I was on a plane the other day meditating. And I really kind of went into that other state that he talks about those energetic states. Right. And it was great. I was on a plane and then I came back to reality. And then there's some meditations that suck, right? Like they really, I'm like, this is a waste of 20 minutes. I'm like all <laughs> over the place. I can't call my mind down. But I'm like, all right, well, I'll just do another one in the future, you know, or maybe if I do another one later today, I'll yeah. have a different experience yep. and realizing what, so then also realizing the distractions mm-hmm. of life. I have a distraction of watching YouTube videos and listening to podcasts. That's my distraction. 
And social media is not really a huge, it is a distraction, but not like my big top two. Yeah. Same. It's consu- it's, it's consumption of content. Yep. And so sometimes that's good and sometimes it's bad. But for me, if I, and I knew it was very clear Joe Dispenza event and I got clearer at the Sacred Sons event that just happened this weekend. Mm -hmm. And so those two events, the Sacred Sons event and then the Joe Dispenza event for me, and I would say for any dude listening, go to a Joe Dispenza event and then go to like a Sacred Sons or some sort of man community that's men only event. Because mm-hmm. though that two combination is amazing. I want to say deadly and lethal for myself, <laughs> right? But in yeah. a good way. Like a, yeah. So that is what I've been focused on since I came back. And it's wow. like just making the commitment. And it's changed everything. It's changed the relationship with my wife. It's changed the relationship with my kids. It's changed the way I look at the world. It's changed the way that we are looking at our business. Yeah. Our business has kind of blown up in the last two months. Nice. And yeah. So it happened right before I went to Joe Dispenza and I won't go into details because it's too fresh to really explain, sure. but something happened inside of our company and we've had a lot of employee transition and I've stepping back in in a way that I haven't stepped in in a few years. And so like huge transition, it's a real big low to be honest, mm-hmm. but it's a low that needed to happen to set us up for where we're going and what's happening. And then for me, where I got stuck when we were doing our energy centers from the one, two, three, four, and five was five, like here. So it's yeah. like, where am I not using my voice and where I'm, now I'm here talking to you. So I'm using, right. So it's like, <laughs> that is where a lot of energy was stuck. And so how is that showing up in my life? And I've just been reflecting on that from that standpoint. Um, but just taking it day by day, you know, like yeah. every day is a little bit different. And it's like, as the, this is the moment, right? Yep. Right now, right? And so- <laughs> planning for the future the best I can, but realize like we're stuck in, not stuck, but like, this is it. This is, and no matter where, like if I've been $50,000 in debt, which I'm not, but some, I'm sure people listening have a, could have debt. Cause you know, if you look at statistics of humans in the United States or in the world, there's, especially in the United States, there's a lot of debt, right? Mm -hmm. Most likely he shares a lot of examples of this can go away in 48 hours. But the reality is, it's like an 80, 20 split, right? Yeah. 20% of people are going to produce these huge results in a very quick period of time. Mm-hmm. 80% of us, it's going to take a little bit of time. Yeah. So for me, recognizing that patience and consistency to show up for myself on the day is by far my most vital thing. So that's what I've been looking at coming back into it. Um, I had a little bit of a crash the first 48 hours, mm-hmm. you know, 48 hours, 72 hours felt a little, you know, pull back and which was expected. Yeah. But coming back from Sacred Sons, actually, I was a little bit expecting the same thing, but I came back Sunday night. I had a wild experience coming back. It was amazing. <laughs> and, but like, I don't feel that this time. Yeah. Like, I don't have it where I thought I would. And I'm like pretty dialed into where we're going and focused. Yeah. So it's cool to have a different take than what I thought was going to happen. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. It's it's kind of like you just are continuously now finding the present moment and, you know, staying present and not needing to find those distractions. Cause I know for me personally, I, that's my biggest thing too. My crutch is needing to consume content, especially yep. when I'm having those moments of like, like I don't have a job, like I have multiple little things, but I don't have like consistent income coming in. I'm always looking at different podcasts and interviews and being like, well, how can I get ahead? How can I, you know, find some way to get money? And it's like, no, stay present. You're you, the the universe and all these energies haven't let you down now. So just stay present and just be, and just be guided and everything's going to be a, okay. (laughs) What do you want to do, Sarah Rust? What do you want to do? I want to be a motivational speaker. (laughs) So this is my, my attempt at starting to get there, but we're, you know, we're making progress. We're almost up to 600 subscribers. So, <laughs> and then what does motivational speaker look like for you? Oh my goodness. Being on stage, being able to share, you know, my own personal story and stories of others and just ha- that, that electric feel in a crowd. Like I, I love that. That's just, it, it really like, you know, inspires me. <laughs> That's great. And then where, Yeah. Anyway, I could go on. So I know yeah. it's all good, but yeah, so I could my- dive into that. Like, this is great. Cause I, I was like, all right, <laughs> let's dive into this. I know this is what I do. Yeah. 
Well, Mike, I would absolutely love to have you back on here again. I know we have a couple more minutes and I want to respect your time as well. I absolutely loved this interview and just being able to share this this moment with you. If you would not mind sharing with us where we can find you, where people can get in contact with you, I'll put all of your information down in the description. So take it away. <laughs> yeah, uh, everything is Mike J. Watts. So my website's MikeJWatts.com. Uh, I have consulting pages there now, which will be updated soon, or just follow me on Instagram for MikeJWatts.com. And if you are a woman entrepreneur who needs assistance, time, money, et cetera, or skills to be able to do that, feelings, you can go to the origin origincompany.co, the origincompany.co. Okay. And that is our company. And you'll see my wife's face on the website. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's where you can connect that's awesome fantastic thank you so much again mike for taking the time to have this conversation i know it's going to especially like i, I was telling you about my statistics most of my viewers are women and it would be great to i having more men here sharing their own like vulnerable experiences like that's just it's so beautiful and it's what the world needs right now for sure it's true we need the masculine healing we that do definitely has to happen the world will we will blow ourselves up if we do not I mean, I, it's kind of an extreme way to look at it, but it's, no. that is true. Yeah. It's unfortunately it's inevitable, but you know what? People like you, you're inspiring the world and I can't oh, thank you enough thanks. for that. <laughs> I appreciate that. Of course. And it's because you're doing your motivational speaking now <laughs> and that's how we got connected in the first place. Exactly. Woohoo. Full circle. Uh, awesome. Well, if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that like, and subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. And also with that, just promise me you'll keep singing. Okay, friend. <laughs>